Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another pen for review. This is a Banu pen. And you'll see here it has the standard Banu box. It's a little bit of a rubberized uh, cardboard box. Nice, slim, small cardboard box. Uh, you can throw these away or recycle them. Or if you want to, you could actually probably put three or four pens in these if you wanted to. Now, the pen here for review, it says here, is the Luminous in Neon. So this is a Banu Briolette Luminous Neon. And it is a broad nib. So I think let's remove the lid on this box. And you'll see here, you get the little cardboard pen pouch. You also get a Banu product information and lifetime warranty pamphlet here. Tells you how you can go to caring for your pen it also comes with a paper straw bedding there as well so all of this is recyclable so i think let's remove the pen and we will show you the pen so this is the banu briolet and this is the luminous neon and i have to say this is quite a striking set of colors so the Briolet is actually, or Briolet is the smaller version of the Banus. Uh, so you do typically normally uh, have to use a uh, cartridge in these. I think you can use converters. We'll have a look in a moment. I don't know if there is a converter inside. Uh, so the Briolet is actually this sort of very tapered down, uh, faceted pen. And when I say faceted, it's a different style of facets. If you look here at the way my studio lights are shining, you'll see there that it's almost like a diamond pattern that's going on there with those facets. So the pen tapers down to the cap finial here, which is just blank, and it tapers out to uh, what is a cap band and then tapers back down again to what would be a lined cap finial. Now, if I unscrew the cap here, you'll see that it comes with a number five nib, and this is a broad nib. Uh, you can see there it's a Schmidt nib. And if I uh, have a look here at the section, the, the sections on the briolettes are actually quite narrow, a little bit too narrow for my liking, but I know a lot of people do like thin sections. You do get a little bit of a flaring out here towards the nib and feed to stop your finger sliding onto this what essentially is a number i think it's a number five size nib uh, the section actually starts to taper out there's a slight step up to the threads and then a little bit more of a step up here to the body of the pen if we unscrew uh, the body here so this does actually have a cartridge converter on so i know uh the one of the original briolettes i had I think it was cartridge only, if I, if memory serves me right. So maybe they have actually changed that. Now, you can remove the converter. It is just a push-on converter. And you can also unscrew these nibs. So let me unscrew this, and I will show you. It is an entire nib unit. So if you had a number of number size five nibs from Bennu, you could swap these uh, between pens by unscrewing the nib unit, or you could most likely probably just unscrew the section. Certainly if it was the same pen model, you could do that and swap those over. If there were different pen models, then you would have to unscrew the nib unit. Uh, and you'd also have to make sure that the other pens were uh, same size nibs. So in this case, this is a number five size nib. Now, there's a lot of threads here, so that's good to, to keep the section screwed into the body. So the size of this briolet is actually quite nice. It's not um, it's, it's not too small for me. So this is actually a larger briolet, I would say, uh, from I think what I tried in the past. Now, the section I do find a little bit thin here, but that's mostly because I like uh, 
not only longer pens but thicker pens so i typically like thicker sections but i know a lot of people that do like thinner sections so i think that will probably be fine for a lot of people now can you post a cap no it's not designed to do so uh i think it would be very difficult to be able to post that cap because of the way that these facets are actually designed uh around the the pen so uh, i think that would be slightly difficult now you do have the Banu uh, name there on the cap band. Uh, you do have the green luminescent there, or luminous, and then you have this pink as well. So this is a glow in the dark pen, and uh, you you could actually uh, use that. I always do think the glow in the dark pens are a little bit more of a gimmick because if you're going to be writing, you're probably going to be writing under light. Uh, I do typically when I write a lot actually have studio lights shining down on my page uh, so it would be charging up this luminous material but you're probably not going to write in the dark um, so I do think from that perspective it is a little bit of a gimmick but equally I know a lot of people do like the luminous versions of the Banus, uh, including the the Grand Scepters as well so uh, it's just something that I, I think people tend to like and there's also this uh, gold uh, glitter uh, or foil that is also within the body as well you you can't feel this so uh, again a lot of people do like that as well so I think with that let's do a size check we'll do a weight check we'll do a pen comparison and then we'll do a writing sample so the full length of the pen we are looking at about 135 millimeters in length the length of the cap, we're looking at 58 millimeters in length. So it's actually really um, bordering just over a, a, an oversized pen. Now, the length of the body to the tip of the nib or tip of the tines, we're looking at about 125 millimeters. So that's why I say it's bordering on. Uh, typically, I, I would say an oversized pen uncapped is about 128 millimeters to 130 or, or over. Um, however, though, I, I do find that this is a good size in my hand. Uh, if you don't like thin sections, but do like the pen, you could always hold it up here, um, but you are gonna find that it is then a little short in your hand, but you could potentially do that if you wanted to. I think let's go and do a weight check. So the full weight of the pen, and bearing in mind that this is not inked up, is just over 19 grams in weight. The weight of the cap, we are looking at just under 5 grams. I'm not sure that I've actually had a cap before under 5 grams. I, I guess maybe I have on, a, on another Briolette version, but I don't think I have on any other pen. That is a very lightweight cap. And then the weight of the body, uninked, we're looking at just over 14 grams. So uh, it is a lightweight pen for sure. Uh, and it is a pen that probably a lot of people will like because of the weight. So I think with that, let's do a comparison with other pens. So from left to right, we have a Diplomat Aero. We have a Pilot Vanishing Point in the Crimson Sunrise. We have a Magna Carta Oxford. We have a London Pen Company, and this is the faceted Christopher 14 in Honey Noir. We have a London Pen Company, and this is the Christopher 14 in a Twisted Cherry Blossom. We have the Banu, and this is the Briolette in the Luminous Neon. We have an Atelier Luso Carina in the Black Ice Illuminite. We have a Twisby Vac 700R Iris. We have an Estabrook SD Oversize Sparkle in the red and an Estabrook SD Sparkle Oversize in the blue. So I think let's go and do a writing sample. So we have the uh, Banu and it is the uh, Briolette. And 
This is a broad and it is a steel nib. Now, the ink in here, um, I could have put green ink in here. Uh, I went with pink. So this is uh, diamine and it's amaranth. It's one of several pink colors that I do like quite a lot. Now, in terms of line variation, I would say that this is putting down about a Western broad. Now, it is a steel nib. I can push it, and it's putting down probably double the line variation there. And you can see here that line variation. And if I continue with the vertical lines, there's no hard starts or skips with that nib. So that means that the nib is uh, fairly well tuned. I think in terms of ink wetness, let's take a look at this. And we'll do a horizontal swatch. So you can see here, this is quite a wet nib. Now, this is a broad nib. So I would expect that in, in a lot of broad nibs, honestly. Uh, some broad nibs can be a little dry, though, uh, but this one is not. Uh, so what do I like and what do I not like about the pen? Well, I'm not normally one that goes in for the luminescence uh, of the Banus. Uh, I have some Grand Scepters. I have three of them. Uh, I just wasn't that keen on and the... the so I have... I have uh, three scepters, but I don't have the Grand Scepters. And uh, the reason why I don't have the Grand Scepters is I really wasn't that keen on the luminescence. However, I am really liking this luminescent green colour here. And I would love to see Banu actually make some other pens with that same luminescent green colour. It's a very bright, vibrant green. Uh, I, I'd say... You could probably match Diamine Apple Glory to that really lovely. Uh, so I have to say that although I'm not really that partial to the Banu Briolette myself, I have to say that I am liking the size. I am liking that we can uh, get the uh, international converter inside that pen as well. It does have a number five size nib, so it is a smaller nib. But again, it's your preference. Some people prefer number six, number eight size nibs. Some people prefer number five size nib. It is a steel nib, it's a Schmidt nib, but you can see here the broad steel nib is actually writing quite well. So I'd like to thank Derek from Stonecott Fine Writing Supplies for loaning me this pen for review. Uh, this pen will be going back to Derek. So if you do want to pick up uh, this specific pen or another Banu pen, then do take a look. Uh, I'll put a link to uh, Derek's website in the description below. I've also got a uh, link here on the lower thirds that you can see as well. So I'd like to thank Derek again for the loan of this pen for review. So this is the review of the Bennu Briolette. Uh, and this is in the luminous neon with a broad steel nib. So thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.